Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from Wisconsin and as you can tell it is winter here. Is it too cold to fly today? It's never too cold. You just got to have the right gear. Anyway, today's video is uh, an interesting one. I got a comment on the old YouTube channel uh, from Rural Route Adventures said, can you do a video that goes into detail in the good and bad of paramotors? What to do and what not to do, what to look out for and anything else. I have so much I'd like to learn about and interest in maybe getting myself into. So I'm going to respond to that and give you a little update. In Wisconsin here, it's, I got a couple flights in, um, but it's cold out, so it's winter. Anyway, some of the new things going on in life, check this thing out. I picked up a new gear hauler. I got the Subaru Outback Wilderness. Brand new, just got that on Monday, so that's pretty exciting. And since it's cold out and I'm not flying, I'm going to go snowboarding this weekend up north with the family. To get into the good and bad of paramotors, well, let's just start out with the good. And I'm going to grab a little firewood so we can go back inside, sit by the fire where it's nice and toasty. Well, one of the good thing about paramotors, good things, is that, whoa, early on when I got into it, I found that it was at a sport unlike any other thing I've ever done. I had raced motocross and snowboarded and did everything like extreme like that, but it's totally unique getting to fly and the real upside the good thing is that you can fly without needing to get a pilot's license now there's still rules and regulations that you're required to follow of course but not having to get a pilot's license or register anything with the government is a huge benefit let's get a little firewood put in here so that allows you to go flying an experienced flight like we all dream of without the need to spend a lot of money or a lot of time course you still want to get training and do it safely something bad about paramotors well they say that it has about the same risk potential as riding motorcycles now it all depends on how you ride or how you fly how dangerous it's going to be and how much training that you get but a lot of the common injuries that you'll see um, would probably be like foot knee leg stuff when you're doing foot launching to take off now I have a wheeled trike and I do foot launch Foot launching takes a lot more coordination. You have to run, you have to control all these different things. And in that process, I've seen and I've experienced wiping out, falling down, face planting. When you're coming in to land, if you don't time your flare right, you can come down. But if you're pretty athletic, and I'm 38, I had a knee surgery when I was like 20. Um, I'm pretty healthy, but not the healthiest uh, of people out there. So you can get injured. That's definitely a possibility. One of the more extreme cases would be if you crashed into the ground. So as you maybe are doing more acrobatic flying or flying down low, or maybe you come into contact with a tree or a power line, you can get hurt pretty bad. That certainly is a downside of it. And you try to avoid it early on. Everybody thinks I'm going to fly safe, not going to do anything dangerous. That's not going to be me. But inherently, you will have a time that you maybe trip or fall or something doesn't go right. You're launching off a new area and you could get hurt. So an injury is a downside. An upside, if you're not super mechanically inclined, paramotoring will get you there. It's a two-stroke engine and you're the one, you're the pilot in charge. You have to maintain it. You have to make sure that it's safe. So you're going to get a lot of knowledge on working on engines and using you know common sense and a lot of uh, mechanical knowledge to understand how your paramotor works how the harness attaches to the frame how you hook in um, the dynamics of the, the wing in flight a lot of different things so there's tons of knowledge on top of you're gonna become a weatherman that's kind of a good and bad because the good thing is you're gonna learn a lot the bad thing is every single time you look outside you're looking to see if it's flyable and you become sort of obsessed with that um, also, you're going to learn about site selection, you're going to learn some FAA things, so you're going to learn more about airspace, uh, weather and cloud structure and things like that. So that's really cool. You're going to learn a lot, definitely, both uh, with the engine and working on things, weather and all the things related to it. All right, let's flip it back over to uh, a downside of paramotoring. Uh, it's expensive. You know, it's not super cheap to get into. It's definitely not as expensive as an airplane and taking pilot lessons, but um, the gear is holding its value pretty well right now because so many people are getting into it. Uh, so that's one of the things, a little bit of cost aside, um, and along with that, is it takes a little bit of space to storage. That's kind of a pro and a con. Uh, the con is that, yeah, you got to store it. You want to keep it 
inside, out of the elements. You want to take care of your wing and make sure that it's in a controlled, climate controlled space. Um, but the upside is it doesn't take up a lot of space. My trike takes up a little bit more space, not as easy to break down. My foot launch one is crazy. I can break that thing down into a suitcase, take it with me when I travel. The wing package is up really easy. So you have a really portable form of flight. So there's the pro and the con of that one. Cruising right along. Uh, another pro is that you're going to just, you're going to get known in the community as the flyer. Around here in Wisconsin, there's not a lot of people that fly. So every time somebody sees a paramotor, I get text messages and calls the next day. Hey, I saw you out flying. Um, so it's kind of cool. Like people are interested it's a hobby that's very healthy and very exciting. And people get to know you as like the paramotor person. Um, another pro is when you're up in the sky, you can go out and survey land and it's relaxing. You're sitting in a comfortable chair moving at a slow speed. That's another pro. You're not going super fast. So you have time to get down low, really cruise along. And that's one of my favorite things is flying down low and just, I don't know, it, to me, every single time I fly, it feels like a dream. It feels like a dream come true. I actually say to myself, this is crazy. Like, how can it get any better than this when I'm up there? That's when everything's going right. Uh, a downside, and people have said this before, is that it can be stress-inducing. Um, people get out of the sport because they feel anxiety. It, it, they just they look at the, the things that could go wrong, and maybe that's more of a mindset thing. So looking at the things that can go wrong can induce anxiety and stress, and you get a little bit worried about it, and then those people sometimes will sell their gear. On the upside, if you got the good attitude of like, hey, this is amazing, um, it gives you something like, I look forward to it so much, being able to get out my gear, go fly. And this leads into another pro is the community of paramotoring. Like any sport or any activity or hobby, when you find other people with similar interests, it's really cool. And people in the paramotoring community, I've been to a lot of fly-ins, are absolutely amazing. There's podcasts and, and different um, YouTube live shows, things like that. There's so many people that are so passionate about flying these things. It's awesome to be involved into that community. Downside, you do have a couple um, personalities out there that I would say are in it for profit and therefore, they don't follow the passion of flying. They follow the greed. So they cause a lot of drama. Those are the people you stay away from. But man, that's like 2%, 1%. Way more people out there incredibly willing to help out and give advice on things like that. Another pro is that you can really use the thing for transportation. It's not super practical, but... It wouldn't be out of the question to be able to fly it to work, fly it to the store, fly it to a friend's house, fly it to your property, whatever, and land. So you can use it. The downside is I wouldn't really count on it as like, I'm going to buy this thing and use it to go hunting in the mountains and get to these locations. Conditions have to be really good and you got to have a good area to take off. So if you're looking for it, like I'm going to use this like a scooter or a dirt bike, eh, not as much. It's more recreational flying. Uh, so yeah, you got to keep that in mind. The positive, we were out in Glamis, uh, a pro is we were out in Glamis flying in the desert and people have sand rails and dirt bikes and buggies and trucks. Those people are all exploring that area and that's fun. Like I love that. But it was the coolest thing ever to be able to be like a bird right above. And when you wanted to, whoo, carve back down right along the dunes and you know get to get to do that same recreational activity, but up high. You have way less chance of getting injured when you're in the air. All the other sports, snowmobiling, dirt bike, and all those things, you're constantly pounding into the ground. And with that, you're going to increase your chance of getting hurt. So the safety and the, the ability to explore is really cool. You're not having impact. You're not running into trees. You're not doing those things. So major upside to paramotoring. A downside is the longevity. Uh, if you don't know mechanical things like that, your paramotor could last one flight. You do have to do simple things like checking your, your mixture ratio on your carburetor, making sure that all of your engine and all of these components are put together well. But if you don't, you know, people spend a lot of money, broken props if they're not properly trained and taken off and you know, they fall down. That can be expensive, blowing up your engine, um, different things that people, there's a lot of, you know, just parts and components on the thing that it's just, you're trying to pack as much power into a small engine as possible. So you got to have it running just right. So it can be kind of pricey in the long run. Another downside is you're probably going to get obsessed with making videos and buying all the gadgets involved with it. You know, you're going to want to mount a camera to your helmet, then you're going to want to put one on a chase cam, then you want one in the wing, and you're going to ask people from the ground. 
So you kind of get into this thing of like, you love filming it. And there's so many people out there, myself, um, Mark Honey, all these people, you know the pilots out there, Tom Kubad, Tucker God, Kyle O'Glee, and so many more uh, that are making videos. So you kind of feel that desire to go and do it, but the time that it takes, the money buying all the cameras, the time, the editing, whew, that can be a lot. So that's kind of almost like a downside. You want to share those flights, but actually capturing something that's cool and putting it together isn't super easy all the time. A little bit of a downside is that it's easy to really fall in love with your paramotor in the sport of flying. So your time with your other family members and stuff might suffer because when you see a beautiful day with no wind, you want to be in the sky. People out, your family and friends want to be out in the boat or out fishing. So it consumes a good portion of your life. That's awesome. You get kind of obsessed and passionate about it. The downside, it might distract away. People will get sick of hearing the word paramotor. I bet at Christmases where people are like, oh, can you stop talking about paramotor? Because my brother and I both fly. So we're always talking about it. Um, and if people aren't flying, they're like, eh, all right, I've heard enough about the paramotor. But for us, we can't get enough of it. Another downside is it can be kind of seasonal. I do fly in the winter and it's not bad. You get a lot of smooth air, but it's cold. Your hands are up in the air. If you don't have good heated gloves, your paramotor might just end up sitting in the garage for four or five months of the year. So it's kind of seasonal where you don't have that windshield in front of you uh, to kind of keep you warmer or out of the wind. So if you live in a good climate, not a big deal at all. But if you live in a windy area, that's a big deal because you just can't fly in super windy stuff. So you got to kind of know your region and where you're flying. Here in Wisconsin, I get a good amount of time. I could be out flying right now. I can see the flag over at the neighbor's house. It's kind of just hanging in the wind. So you got to watch. Some people live in very windy areas. In that case, it's probably not the best. But if your conditions are good and you can tolerate a little bit of cold, man, winter is beautiful. Fall flights are the best. Summer when you can go up in shorts. Ah, that's amazing. An upside is that a lot of the gear is super safe now. If you're getting anything in the past five years, wings, uh, frames, engines, everything, it's very safe. It's came so far from 15, 20 years ago. The videos I see of that stuff, heavy wings that were maybe slow or heavy and unsafe, hard to launch. Stuff now, it's lighter, it's stronger, it's easier to fly. There's tons of good training and videos like this out there that you can fill your brain with all of this information before you even begin training. So you're well um, prepared for what's gonna happen. You'll know if you're gonna fly. I have people that ask, can I try it out and see if I like it? Uh, yeah, if you don't know if you're gonna like it, you can get a tandem flight or you can go paragliding. Um, most people know that they're gonna like it uh, and you get into it knowing that you're gonna love it and you do love it. So that's it, some pros and cons of flying. If you have pros or cons, put them down in the comments below or tips or advice, put those things down there. People read it. Uh, I love reading the comments. So put it down below, share your advice. Again, I haven't been making a lot of videos. Can't wait to get back into the sky. I flew the trike the other day off the ice. It was a little bit chilly, but amazing. So I'll have more trike videos and more flying. Right now I'm going to school two days a week and working full-time HVAC. I'd like to make some HVAC videos because I'm learning so much about it. Moving into the service field, it's incredibly exciting. But for now it's winter. I'm going snowboarding as soon as I get out of the house here. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys in the sky. Have fun at Salton Sea, all the pilots out there and be safe. All right, blue skies, everybody. See you later.